next guys come up to the stage performing the Cape Fear Comedy Festival. Just got eaten by an alligator. Let's give it up for JY Cotton. Yeah? All right, uh, this is uh, what I look like, sorry. Uh, didn't take care of myself, went the other way. Uh, fine, I don't know how to start with this. I, I just wanted to get drunk as quick as possible. I'm almost there. Look, uh, I think it's important to experience new things. I don't know if you guys have ever been to a comedy club before, but uh, I mean, we're in a bar, so fuck it. Uh, thanks for coming out, we appreciate it. Yeah? Good. It's important to do new things. I did something new for the first time in my life. I did something I'd never done before. Uh, I looked a homeless man in the eyes. Uh, don't recommend that. <laughs> for me, it was like staring at the ghost of Christmas future. I, uh, I saw a homeless man debate whether or not to ask me for a dollar. How shitty do I look? That bad? Like I could see the homeless wheel spinning in his brain asking himself, does this guy have a dollar? Or is he on my turf? And we fought. And now I own Gray Street, it's mine. <laughs> Walk on it freely. Welcome! I am the Pumpkin King! <laughs> this is best day in age, look like shit by the way. Check this out, this is GQ. Look at that, yeah. G stands for gave up. It's working. I just feel sorry for women trying to pick out guys because they all kind of look like shit now, you know? It's gonna be real hard trying to figure out if a dude's indigent living on the streets or just manages a Whole Foods. <laughs> Either way, it smells the same. Like, how many girls do you think have accidentally banged a hobo uh, thinking he was just super indie and alternative? Okay. Like, oh my god, you're like, no man, I've never dated before. You want some chili? I cooked in a boob? That's so Etsy. Let's craft. <laughs> yes, very funny. Thank you. I don't know where we're at as a culture, but uh, I think we're, uh, I don't know, just people that care about things suck. Right? Isn't it the worst people that are emotionally invested in things they care about? Ugh, oh, the worst. Can't handle it. It's like this entire culture is uh, just social injustice junkies where every week people just, just hop on bandwagon ideals and, and try to define themselves based on memes and, and Facebook statuses. We're like, I'm causing change because 30 years ago people were like creating civil rights and then we had to live up to 30 years of badass movies and then we felt like, shit, we're not doing anything done. Well, fuck it. We're going to meme against Chick-fil-A for a while. It's just fucking annoying. I'll give you an example. A while back ago, you know, there's a Chili's franchise. Didn't want to let gay people eat at Chili's, right? I'm against that. But then uh, everybody on my Facebook divided up into these two weird camps. There was one camp going, well, we're not going to eat at Chili's because they don't like gay people. And the other camp was like, well, we're going to support businesses even if they don't like gay people. But I was in the middle going, well, how do you know if someone's gay at Chili's? Like, <laughs> that's a lot of quick judgment you're throwing at some people who just want to enjoy some Southwest egg rolls, okay? This those things are delicious no matter what you're trying to wash out of your mouth. <laughs> Week after that, it was like, don't shop at Hobby Lobby. They're not going to let you have abortions at Hobby Lobby. I'm like, who the fuck's having abortions at Hobby Lobby? <laughs> Everybody in that store is going through menopause. <laughs> That's what arts and crafts is for. It's, what's that? Is your womb barren and devoid of uh, life itself? Uh, well, here's some popsicle sticks and glitter craft. It's just annoying. It's just like people that care about things, they ruin the inherent value of those things, you know? You can take a good thing and you take really passionate people and it ruins that thing. Like Jesus as an idea is fine. It's, it's okay. Hey, uh, love your neighbor like you love yourself. All right, well, I don't know if he'll appreciate that, but fucking laugh. Well, yeah. Mutual masturbation. Let's have a good time. Uh, not a bad idea, but somehow like super Christians just take that idea like, well, oh, I'm going to say love thy neighbor and now God hates fags. You're like, that's not the fucking, where did you get that? You know, they ruin, and it works on either ideology. For instance, the people that really care about Jesus are just as annoying as the people who really care about kale and neither one, yeah, no, gross. Neither one you want to talk to ever. It's like, it's got a lot of nutrients, it's got a lot of vitamins you put inside your body. It's like, yeah, I don't like to taste a kale. I'm talking about Jesus. All right, well, I don't want that inside me either. <laughs> I'll try him in this movie, I guess. I don't know. It ruins music. People that give a shit about music ruin good music, you know? There's a lot of good bands, but their fate is just fucking ruin it, you know? You go to a bar, you see a girl with a rock star on her tits, right? She's got bedazzled skulls going, rock star, I'm a rock star! You're like, really? Do you sing in a band? Do you play an instrument? No, I just do a lot of coke, fuck a lot of guys. Well, that rocks, I guess. Uh, wouldn't really call you a star yet, you know? You gotta build your way up. Work the, work, work the chitlin' circuit or something. I don't know. 
punk rock's the worst. Like, punk rock is awesome until you meet punk rock people who take it way too fucking far, you know? Like, it's like, like punk rockers, it's like cosplay for music, where they just dress up in these characters, and they get really pissed off and offended when you want to take pictures because you confuse the festival for a fucking uh, Comic-Con. Look, I'm just saying, it's like people that just run around blaming everything that's shitty in their life on punk rock and, and like it's a good thing, you know? It's like, man, I went to a Starbucks, took a shit on the bathroom floor, I'm punk rock! I'm like, no, you're gross. That's not, don't blame the misfits for that, that's not their fault. It's not, man, it's fucking anarchy, man, I'm fucking creating chaos. That's not chaos, you work at that Starbucks. Like, I'm very passionate about blues music. I love blues. I grew up on Lightning Hopkins, Tampa Red, Lead Belly. But I don't wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning and immediately start sharecropping in a four-piece zoo. Start wailing my sadness harmonica. I'm blues! Like, don't get me wrong, I have been fired for singing old Negro spirituals, but that's only because Pizza Hut doesn't appreciate good music. That and my manager is black. They might have to do with that. They don't like sarcasm or irony at the hut. Where do I want to go with this? I know where I want to go with this. But I'll go a different place. I'm obsessed with time travel, motherfuckers! It's the only way you can say it when you don't sound like a faggot in the South. <laughs> Two things I know, crushing pussy and fucking time travel and quantum theory. It's the only way I can travel. I love time travel, man. I think about time travel every day of my life. I wish you go back in time and do it all over again. My life, this set, whatever, you know. <laughs> And sometimes when I talk about time travel, people become obsessed, they give you ethical cliches, right? They just immediately bring you these cliches of ethics. They go, well, would you go back in time and kill Hitler? First of all, that's not how ethics works, all right? <laughs> Second of all, I wouldn't go back in time and kill Hitler. I would just go back in time and teach that motherfucker how to paint better. <laughs> okay, thank God, okay. All right, thank you, Richmond, for getting that. Usually people are stupid and uh, don't realize that, well, apparently, before being a mass genocidal, warmongering piece of shit, Adolf Hitler was a struggling artist. Keep that in mind, you're not laughing at some of these bits. It's up to you, how much do you love the Jews? Come on. Not that much, Richmond, okay. I, uh, I think Hitler's, uh, like I would, I would, if I had a time machine, oh, fuck it, I'll just do it. Look. I think Hitler's responsible for the modern art movement as we know it. A lot of people don't give him credit for that, but I think modern art started with Hitler. A lot of people think modern art started because after World War II, people tied the rigors to the lies of fascism and the structures and disciplines. Personally, I think modern art started because after World War II, no art institute didn't want to deny any students and be responsible for the next day off Hitler. <laughs> Look how shitty art got after World War II. Pretty tragic, pretty tragic. What's this? What's this? Uh, splattered paint on white canvas? That's brilliant, Jackson Pollock. Come right in. Please don't murder the gypsies. All I'm saying is if I had a time machine, I would travel back to 1981, pick up Bob Ross, and then show Hitler how to make happy trees. I like graffiti art. I'm glad you're an art crowd, man. I don't get to talk about art enough, man. I like art. I got into graffiti art. Look around. I like graffiti art. I just think graffiti art is an is underappreciated art form. You know, they don't appreciate it because like white culture thinks it's former racism because of its association with uh, black urban youths and gang culture. Every time they see graffiti, they just think, oh, that's just gangs creating, marking their territory, which doesn't make sense to me. Like, why is graffiti art considered not artistic because it's gang related? And at the same time, Mount Rushmore is considered a fucking national artistic landmark. Mount Rushmore is the most gangsta form of graffiti. <laughs> In the history of face tags, that's some gangsta shit. What did we do? We took a mountain that didn't belong to us, carved the heads of our beautiful white leaders into it to stare at the indigenous people like, what? <laughs> Personally, I think we should re-carve uh, Mount Rushmore to reflect white guilt. I think that'd be good. Like, like all, all the presidents are like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm at. Like Thomas Jefferson was in the middle of a really racist joke, like, hey, let me tell you about this black guy. Oh, I thought we carved a black guy behind him, like, disapproving. Except, except Lincoln. Lincoln's like, go on, Tommy. My conscience is clean. 
Maybe graffiti isn't gangster enough, and maybe that's why white people don't appreciate graffiti, you know? When we have the landmark of Mount Rushmore, graffiti kind of pales in comparison. It's like, what, really? You gotta tag a wall? You gotta comparison? Yeah, did you also misplace an entire indigenous culture and give them smallpox through blankets? Didn't think so, bitch. Oh, what's that, you got mad rhymes? You got hip hop beats? Yeah, you ever listen to a bugle next to an Apache? <laughs> Oh, fucking shit is moccasins. I don't know where I'm going with this. I really don't know. All right. I, I got to dismount here, and so what I'm going to do is uh, tell you a series of racist jokes. Okay. I, I don't want to. Uh, it's, it's in the comedy contract. You have to. You're below the Mason Dixon line, so it's safe. No, it's not. Because uh, you just assumed which race I was going to attack. Favorite part about that joke. Everybody gets excited. Yeah, get those others. Not like this shade, but those shades over there, man. It's a beautiful, hateful rainbow. I don't, I don't like racist jokes, man. I fucking hate them. Uh, what I hate about them, is, like they're all ignorant, but it's the, it's the specific type of ignorance that no one's quite have expressed. The problem I have with racist jokes is they always confuse economic stereotypes for cultural stereotypes. They confuse economics for cultural. For instance, a lot of, a lot of Hispanic comics get on stage and like, yeah, Mexicans, we drive without insurance in Cole, shoot guns in the air, and pregnant my white sister. You've heard the bits, maybe? Yeah. Watch BET. Go to BT, they'll look at the white dude in the front row, and like, oh, that's cool, we have white people in our crew because we have bad credit, motherfucker, what, what? Dance for 20 minutes, it's very entertaining, but it's stupid, no. Poor people drive without insurance. Poor people have bad credit. Look at me, I'm whiter than a vampire's taint. I'm not co-signing shit. <laughs> or explain taint to anybody not laughing. You're just gonna have to Google that on your own. Like, I seriously get offended every time I see that Geico commercial. You can save a lot of money by switching to Geico. Guess what? You can save a hell of a lot more money by not having insurance. It's incredibly cheaper. No race owns that. Poor people own that shit. You're getting weird on me. All right, I just, I, I just think race comes down, it's like, uh, it, 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 it's, I don't know what's going on, man. I just know that there's no more heroes, and it seems like the, the civil rights movement was the last time we ever had heroes, you know? I don't, I don't know if you think about this, but the, the day we live, do you guys have heroes? Do you, do you have a hero, man? Folded arms, elbow titty guy? Not particularly. Not particularly, no. Do you have a hero? No? Look at you pussies. <laughs> Thousands of years, we, we developed heroes. We, we had hero culture. We had fucking Hercules and, and founded it. And we, we held these people to these ideas, to what they did. And now we live in a society where we just destroy every human being. Anybody that comes around that does a good thing, we go, yeah, that's a good thing there. But you're also kind of a piece of shit for sending out those dick tits. You know, like... <laughs> Like, it doesn't matter. It's like, it's so bad now Jesus could never come back. There's no way Jesus Christ could come back where TMZ isn't following him around going, Hey, Jesus, who you fucking? He's like, oh, no, no, I don't want to do that. I, uh, it's just, it, it, I, didn't, I learned this myself. Like, like, my hero growing up was Gandhi. Like, Gandhi was my, my personal hero. We're going to deal with this mic shit. Uh, Gandhi created civil disobedience. He, he created the passive resistance movement. It was an amazing thing, and it, it, it's an innovation in human civilization about not fighting back and taking the hits until your enemy just folds and you, you win independence. It is an amazing fucking thing. But when you look at Gandhi the person, Gandhi the person was a piece of shit. Gandhi was a terrible fucking person. First of all, he was a closeted homosexual who hated himself because he couldn't fuck dudes, so he beat his wife and slept with little girls. And also, ironically enough, Gandhi hated black people. Gandhi was a fucking racist. Does that not blow your mind? That Gandhi, huge fan of civil disobedience and irony. That's fucking amazing to me. But we, we gotta look past the piece of shit of the person because his message still found his way to the civil rights movement to where it was adopted by my, my other hero, Martin Luther King, who was an amazing man to me. Martin Luther King's a hero for many reasons. He's my hero, number one, chiefly, because he's the only person ever that lived that was able to describe a dream where everybody paid attention. <laughs> That's amazing! Have you ever tried to explain a dream that you had to never pay? Just watch their eyes glaze over in defeat? That's a plus. Somehow Martin Luther King did, but let's, let's look at that dream. Martin Luther King had a dream. I got four white children and four black children drinking a mustard fountain. And that, that's a beautiful dream, but maybe, maybe if he had lived, he would have seen that dream go further because there's a lot of things missing from that dream. For instance, you think if he lived a little longer, that dream would be him realizing that all the streets uh, named after him would be violent, terrible places to live? 
you know? I'm not the first one to say this, but maybe that was part, why wasn't that part of Martin Luther King's dream? Like, I have a dream that my main streets will be shitty, terrible place to live. What the fuck happened? Hold on. <laughs> what about this? Let's go further into the trope. What about all the gays going into those areas, gentrifying it because all the property values are low, bringing in their $10 peanut butter and jelly sandwich restaurants, and their frappuccinos, and their Jamba juices so that all the white kids can move in, making the property values rise up with all that gentrification, kicking out all the black people so you can have a street filled with gay people. Whose dream is that? Gandhi's. <laughs> All right, let's hear it again for Jay White on it. Let's talk about our headliner. We had to put this floor together. He's a regular opener for Doug Stanhope. He's opened up for.